Okay. Hello, everybody. Uh, thanks for coming to our parish meeting. And uh, it's going to be a combination of folks who are going to be speaking today. I'm going to start off by just saying thank you. And uh, we have not had a parish meeting in since June. And the last parish meeting we had was about an hour and a half long. It felt like there were so many things to talk about. We were still in the, we were three months into the pandemic and trying to create new ways for us to connect. And just as a church, you all have responded so creatively and really so wonderfully to the circumstances that we're in. God is teaching us how to be faithful and how to stay connected to him and to each other. So thank you. Thanks for this time. We're going to open us. Heavenly Father, we are grateful for our church. We're grateful for your Holy Spirit, that you are lifted up on our praises, that you inhabit us, that you, um, by your Son, give us an identity of people who have been redeemed. So thank you that we don't have to be anxious for anything, but we can just bring our concerns and our joys, our troubles, and our thanksgivings to you. And it gives us great joy today to talk about what you've been doing in our church and to anticipate what will come in the next few weeks. Thank you, God, for this gathering and for the people who are here with us. In your name we pray. Amen. I want to introduce you to our wardens, uh, Joanna Montague and Kevin Marshall, and they're going to start with a welcome themselves. Oh, hi, I'm, I'm Kevin. I'm one of our two wardens. Joanna and I are going to split up uh, some background discussion about the election. Uh, we're both uh, wrapping up our time on vestry this year, which means also our time of warden, and it's been uh, quite a year for which we're uh, it's been a challenge, but we're also very thankful for it. Um, like for me, particularly, I've really loved the morning and evening prayer, which I'm sure never would have happened otherwise. Uh, and it's been a great mm -hmm. blessing to walk through the scriptures and pray with the rest of the congregation remotely. And I'll hand it off to Joanna and then uh, come back with a little more after she's done. Thanks, Kevin. Um, as Kevin said, I'm one of our wardens. And um, as I was thinking about what the last few months have been, I actually have been really grateful for small groups restarting. Um, it's just been such a gift. So to those of you that are leading small groups, thank you so much. Mine has been one week in person because it was rain, because it was um, great weather and one week on Zoom because it was raining. And it has just been a gift to get to be together again um, in that small, more intimate capacity where we can talk and actually see each other's faces. So um, thanks to our small group leaders. Um, so for those of you who are super in tune to the church calendar, it's vestry election time. Um, and as I'm sure um, you all are just anticipating is that we are gonna do it electronically this year, surprise, surprise. Um, so what you need to know about that first is nominations open today and um, we will be open for two weeks. Kevin's gonna tell you a little bit more about who to think about, um, and what it looks like to be a member of our vestry, but I'm gonna talk you through just like what the process is. Um, so we have two weeks to nominate. You can email your nominations to nominations at restorationarlington.org. Um, when you nominate someone, you need to include their name, maybe a couple of sentences about why you think they'd be a good person on the vestry and you can nominate yourself. If this is something that you feel called to, please feel free to nominate yourself. Um, after we get those nominations, we'll have about a month where the Vestry Discernment Committee, which is um, Kevin, Danny Lee, and me, who are all rolling off of Vestry this year, plus David, will work with everyone who's nominated. And through the course of that month, we'll create a slate. Um, so again, we need your email because the week before Thanksgiving, we are going to email you that slate. Um, it'll be a bio book that has pictures and information about everyone who's running for Vestry. Um, and then the week after Thanksgiving from November 29th to December 6th, um, you will get an email um, with your ballot. It will be from SurveyMonkey and um, your, your link will be unique so that you can vote just once, but it will be anonymous. So again, if you, we do not have your email, please log into CCB and update it. And if you're having trouble getting into CCB, you can contact a member of the staff and they'd be happy to help you. So Kevin, do you want to tell us a little bit more about what are we looking for for Vestry candidates? 
Sure. As uh, Joanna mentioned, three of us are rolling off the vestry this year. We're all, and we constitute the nominating committee with David. So Joanna and I and Danny Lee. So there's nine people on the vestry. You serve for a three-year term, which means every year we're electing three more. So the uh, nominating committee will try to come up with a slate of about double the number of openings that there are. The vestry, think of the vestry as a mix of a board of directors and a board of elders. So we oversee the temporal affairs of the church, but also have concern for the spiritual welfare of the church. You can't really separate them. And we spend a lot of time praying for the church. So if you wonder what kind of people would be good uh, candidates for vestry, in our bylaws, we, we have a bunch of qualifications we list, and I won't bore you with all of those, but if you've ever read Titus or First Timothy, you'll have a pretty good sense of the kind of things that we're looking for. To start off, the person needs to be a baptized and confirmed member of Restoration Church. That's extremely helpful. And uh, also be a, a mature, orthodox, small o Christian, so not a, a new believer. And then generally walking in accordance with the faith. And I think we all kind of know what that means. And then more specifically to restoration, someone who uh, has a demonstrated commitment to serving the church with time, talent, or treasure. And in addition to those uh, requirements that are more or less biblical, not less, but uh, biblical plus, uh, we would love to have a, a broad cross-section of the demographics of the church if we can. And there are also particular skills that tend to be useful on the vestry. Um, we inevitably come up, uh, deal with things involving law or, or rules, uh, personnel issues come up, and of course also financial issues. You'll be hearing more from our treasurer. So people who have skills or background in that can be particularly helpful. That doesn't mean that it has to be your job now or even ever, but those kinds of things can be useful. Um, those, I think that gives you an idea of what we're looking for, and I'll only close by saying one more time in case you missed it when Joanna said it three times, we need your emails. <laughs> That's the only way the election will work well. And to give you one very specific example, if you are married and you and your spouse share an email, you will only be able to vote once unless you uh, create a second email, add it in CCB, uh, and then we can use that for the election and you're free to disable it afterward. And I think Brad, our treasurer, will be next. Thanks, Kevin. Um, first of all, I want to give a very special thank you to our finance team for their continued work throughout the year. Um, and we're always looking for more folks to join finance. If you have any interest, please contact uh, myself or, or someone else on the finance team. All right. Uh, just going to show you a few slides here, a uh, little less than last time. So happy to report that we finished the year almost 10% above our uh, projected giving. Uh, the, the numbers are actually a little less than I've put on here, uh, a little change, but um, you can see this is the highest amount we've had in the past several years and certainly an improvement over, over last year's uh, performance. Uh, for this fiscal year, we saw very strong giving the first six months of the year. It, it slowed these past six months, um, but it's still held strong. Um, and so thank you to everyone who has uh, continued to tithe and, and uh, updated your information on CCB. Um, expenses for this year were uh, about three and a half percent above our projections, primarily due to uh, adaptations to COVID and, and some of our birthday expenses, but uh, well in line and, and staff uh, does a wonderful job uh, stewarding our church's resources. Um, Next slide. Uh, for the budget this year, as a reminder, our fiscal year runs September 1st, to August 31st. Uh, our fiscal year 21 budget amount is uh, $1,985,612.00, like to be specific. Uh, this number represents a 3% increase over our FY20 budget uh, and puts us in a good position to um, continue <laughs> adapting to the changes. Uh, as a reminder, the largest category of our budget is personnel, um, and our staff team is going through a lot of changes this year, uh, as David has been communicating in, over the past few months. Uh, we also plan to revise the budget uh, should our giving trends, trends change significantly, uh, either, either up or down, um, again, to continue adapting to our changing environment. Uh, next slide. 
I said, this sort of shows the, the financial health of our church. Uh, as a reminder, we like to keep a base of 3.0 months cash on hand. That's uh, cash you can think of as operating reserves uh, as needed. We are currently at 5.6. Uh, this does include our birthday gift, uh, which the vestry is, is still uh, working with. Without the birthday gift, we're at 3.9 months cash on hand. And this is a one and a half months improvement over last year. So we are in a very healthy position for now. Uh, again, uh, we like to say this three months. This does go seasonally and we'll, we'll uh, start dropping down uh, to lower amounts as, as the year fiscal year progresses. And last slide. And this is just an update on our building fund cash. As a reminder, uh, we allocate a, around $25,000 each fiscal year to our building fund, uh, currently sitting at uh, around $335,000. We are getting to that point in our building where over the next several years, uh, we will we anticipate uh, some significant expenses of just updates and maintenance. Um, and we, we will use the building fund uh, there and we'll not have to uh, tap into our operating costs. So. That's all I've got. If you have any questions, again, please feel free to call or email me uh, or reach out to uh, anyone on staff or, or uh, vestry. So I'll turn it over to David. Thanks so much, Brad. Um, I will also say that if you want to put a, a question into the chat, you're welcome to. Um, we're hoping to have about five or six minutes at the end of this meeting for, to be able to answer some of your questions. So we might bring Brad back up if you want to ask anything about our finances or the situation that we're currently in. But thanks for the great report. Thank you for being a generous uh, church. And thank you to our vestry and finance team, just as you are flexible and willing to pivot as different circumstances change. So we're very grateful. I wanna take a moment to uh, talk about some of the staff changes. Uh, if you've been reading my rector's update over the past month, uh, then you've heard about the change that happened with Isaiah Brooms and the change that's happening with Endo Leas. So let me first talk about Isaiah. Um, in August, Isaiah stepped away from being the director of Apex and moved into a curacy position. And that's for two things, one to prepare for ordination to the priesthood and also recognizing that being our audio visual systems engineer was something where we needed his expertise and help on a, a weekly basis. And so um, the prioritizing of both of those things, getting ready for priesthood and uh, helping us do YouTube live and everything else that he does to make ha that happen every week, uh, we did that shift in August. Lord willing, Isaiah and Scott, who you see here, um, also recording some stuff for YouTube Live, Isaiah and Scott will be ordained in November. Currently, their um, ordination dossier is in the hands of Bishop John Guernsey and our Diocesan Committee on Ordinations, and they will make a the final discernment decision about both of these guys in October. So we're praying for them. Our vestry, uh, gave their recommendation for them to move from the transitional diaconate to being priest. And uh, we hope that Bishop John will take that as well and he will choose to do that. We'll give you more details as we get those back from Bishop John. Really grateful to Isaiah for what he's done um, in the past six months to help us be online and to worship together remotely and really excited about the work God is doing in him to prepare him for priesthood and with Scott as well. The second big change is as Isaiah stepped away from being the director of Apex, um, we asked Nathan Dickerson to be the acting director of Apex. And then we hired Lexi McMahon as a part-time Apex coordinator and Ryan Goyer um, shuffled his job description so that he could give part of his time to being an Apex coordinator as well. I gotta tell you, I'm so grateful to God to be able to increase our youth ministry staff uh, and these three have done a fantastic job in kicking us off this fall. If you have a kid who's between sixth grade and 12th grade, they are ready to get to know your kid and celebrate with your kid. And there's a parents meeting right after this meeting at 1230 for Apex Parents. So um, I'll have one of them throw the Zoom link um, in our chat and you can just sort of jump right over to that parent meeting as soon as we're done with this one. So we are also conducting a, a very wide search for a full-time director of Apex who would join our staff team. 
and they'll talk a little bit more about that at 1230. But we can be praying. As I prayed this morning during the prayers of the people, uh, I believe that God has his eye on a man or a woman who's going to become our director of Apex. And we want to be ready to welcome them. We also want to have a connection to that person as soon as possible so they can move into this slot. And then the other uh, staff change is Endel. So a few weeks ago, um, Endel announced that he intends to step down as our part-time director of worship arts. And he will step down from that when Restoration hires a full-time director of worship arts uh, through just a very prayer-filled discernment process. Endel is convinced that God is not calling him to be the director of worship arts, but is we are so grateful for the way that Endel has stood in this position for the last year. Uh, it has been such a gift to our congregation to have him up there each week and for us to know him, for him to know us. So this is another job search for which we would love for you to pray. Um, and I wanna give Endel a chance, just a, a moment to speak to this transition that he's going through. Endel, do you wanna unmute? Yes, thank you, David. Um, I just wanted to take a moment to, to say thank you to all of you. It has been a, a true joy and one of the greatest blessings of my life to be able to serve in this capacity and so, Kate and I um, will, will continue as part of this family. We are so excited for what's next. I won't go into details. There's a video that, as David mentioned in his rec directory from a few weeks ago that you can find uh, that explains sort of the longer discernment process. But we have just been so thankful for your support and prayers and friendship and grace in this period and are excited for what's next. So thank you. Thank you, Endel. And uh, as Endel referenced, the, the video is on our YouTube live channel and want to make sure you see that conversation between the two of us. It's an incredible story of God's faithfulness to Endel and God's faithfulness to us as a church. So thank you for serving in this role. I want to take a moment to introduce Louise Brooks. She's our director of kids small groups and uh, I, we're so grateful for you, Louise for your creativity in this time and for the ways that you're connecting with families and parents and kids who are fifth grade and below. Um, could you tell us what's going on and take a moment to say hi to us? You bet, thanks. Um, it's, gosh, it's really good to see everybody. And um, I'm so thankful for the work I get to do at Restoration, caring for kids and families. We have 125 families, which represent uh, 260 kids at Restoration. And so we're trying to figure out ways to help kids plug in in different ways. And so we created what I call the big four, or maybe four and a half. Um, every week we do kids small groups via Zoom. So that allows people to connect visually and in person so that we can be together apart. Um, kids come, we teach a lesson. Many parents I think are listening in the background, rah, rah. Um, and then kids go into their small groups. We have 15, uh, 16 committed leaders who are serving our kids every week, engaging with them, thinking creatively. I love our kids small group leaders. So thank you kids small group leaders. Mm -hmm. If you can't come to Zoom or if Zoom is not your thing, um, there's, there's the half piece. Every Friday parents get in their e-newsletter for parents, a description of the lesson ways in which you as a family could lead and have that conversation together. Um, also on Mondays, uh, thanks to Ryan doing all the jobs at Restoration, Ryan also helps with our podcast and uh, Pray and Ponder drops on Mondays and that's another way that you could engage with the lesson on Sundays. Then on Tuesdays we have for our very littlest um, story time where we sing or I sing and I have a great time. <laughs> but <clears throat> anyway, I sing, I have a great time. My friends sing with me. Um, we love being together, reading stories that are so common and yet we begin to pull out the themes of the gospel in these stories. We love that. So uh, the other way we get to engage is through the liturgical toolkits, which Susan Denherter has um, 
uh, been very generous in pulling together for us. I got to do all the big dreaming. She got to do the planning and prep. Um, and I've loved partnering with her in that. The liturgical toolkits, have a devotional, have a Bible, have all the tools you need to have kids small groups at home. And so for those who want to just do church at home, uh, like stop doing ballet and read your Bible, as Charlotte is showing us here, um, you can do that at home. There will be three liturgical kits this year. We're almost done passing out the first 125 to our families. We'll build two other kits coming out in November for Advent and then in February for Lent. So we're trying to help people plug in and engage with all those different learning styles, with all those different ways of listening and working and reading the scriptures together. So thanks for thanks for jumping in. Let me know what you need. We love you. We're praying for you. Thanks, David. Um, I think Kat is going to talk about like our favorite time of the year. Is that true? It is. Thanks so much, Louise. We really appreciate you. Thanks. Kat. Thanks. I'm going to talk a little bit about the fall retreat. Uh, I know this is one of um, our congregation's favorite events every fall, and we are a little sad that we can't gather in the same ways that we've been able to for the last 10 years, but we are also very excited about the ways that we will be able to gather this year. And so I'm going to talk about four different events that are happening uh, that weekend, which is October 9th, 10th, and 11th. Three days, four events. So the first event is going to be on Friday evening, and David Taylor, who is an associate professor at Fuller uh, some, uh, Seminary out in California, he's going to lead us through a seminar that he's calling Praying Like Jesus by Praying the Psalms. And I've been emailing with David Taylor and David Hankey this uh, the last couple of months, and I am so excited about this seminar. David Taylor is full of knowledge and wisdom about prayer and especially about the Psalms. And I think the ways that he's gonna show us how we can pray uh, really will pour some energy into our lives. And I think we're all in need of that right now. So we're excited about the ways that he's gonna do that. On Friday night, that's at 7.30. And you may think, oh, it's happening online. I don't need to sign up, but actually signing up for this will really help us plan how many small group leaders we need because we'll not only hear from David Taylor, he'll do a Q and A, but we're also gonna do some small group breakout sessions. So in order to plan ahead for that, we'd love for you to sign up so that we know who will be coming so we can have small group leaders for you. Then the next thing that we're gonna do is a bonfire, but we're gonna do several of them. We have over 15 sites around the DMV, and those are either at 6.30, 7.30, or 8.30, depending on what the host has chosen uh, for their own home. And there's a capacity limit for every single one based on the host's uh, determination of social distancing in their own backyard. But a lot of them are kid-friendly, there, each host is gonna receive a box from Restoration with all the things that you need for a fun bonfire. So you don't have to bring anything other than a chair if you have it. Uh, everything else will be ready for you there, pre-packaged, so it'll be great. Um, those are also, the details are also on the sign of genius when you go to sign up. Then on Sunday morning, just like normal Sundays, we'll hear from David Taylor at 10 o'clock at our normal service. He'll be continuing our sermon series this fall in Matthew, um, and that's going to be great as well. So you get two times to hear David Taylor that weekend, and I really think that's going to be great. So you can sign up to attend in person via our normal channels that you normally would, or uh, you can log on to YouTube like normal as well. And then after the service, at 12 noon, we're going to gather for a picnic in Oak Grove Park just down the street from Restoration. And it's bring your own everything, bring your own blanket, your picnic lunch, um, but it'll be really nice to just gather in person to see people face to face, socially distance, of course, um, but bring everything that you need for that picnic and we'll just have a time of uh, fun. And I think that's about it, but if, I don't know if there are any questions, but you can find the sign up. If you just type in our website slash fall retreat, that'll take you to a blog post that actually gives a little bit more information about all of those events, as well as the link to sign up. So we hope you will do that in the next week or so. Thanks so much, Kat. It is gonna be a blast and I appreciate you and your team pulling it all together and being really creative in a time where we are trying to be remote and yet together. Thanks so much.
Um, I'm going to kick it back to Brad real quick. There's a couple questions we had, one about the mortgage and one about the birthday gift. And so um, let me start with the mortgage one first. Brad, is this, um, can you tell us about any plans that are for refinancing our mortgage? Sure. We, uh, as you may or may not know or remember, our mortgage reset um, back in July, uh, adjustable rate uh, adjusted down, which was not what we were anticipating. And so that's a good thing that provides us uh, a good launching pad um, to evaluate. The finance team investry are considering uh, in the next couple months what uh, steps to take there uh, as far as the mortgage and, and how to proceed. So hopefully, I hope to have uh, some updates on that very soon. Uh, the second question about the birthday gift, uh, we, we still have the birthday gift funds. Um, they may very well be, be used towards the mortgage. Uh, we have been sitting on those uh, this, this past fiscal year, um, just anticipating any uh, significant changes or drops in, in, in giving that may have necessitated the, the, that use. But um, imagine uh, some of those funds may be applied, may. We're still considering all options. Can I add Thanks, something Brad. on that, David? Yes, please do, Kevin. Uh, the birthday gift also uh, is part of the reason we have uh, Scott Buckout as a curate this year. Yes. It gave us a great flexibility on that. And now with the staff changes coming on this fall, the birthday gift is giving us a lot of uh, flexibility to figure out how to uh, uh, adjust and, and adjust with that and build on it. So thank you. Yeah, thanks a lot. I mean, I think the theme is, is uh, we had this tremendous birthday last November and we knew that the mortgage was adjusting this summer. We, the coronavirus hit, like we, we just didn't know. We were walking through a lot of uncertainty. So now we're at a place where we have more cash on hand than we normally have at this time of the year. And our finance team, our vestry, we are praying about how do we, how do we use this well for both our debt and for the opportunities that we're trying to pursue. Um, and we are in a discernment for that. So thank you for your generosity and please join us in praying for how we use these resources well for the opportunities that are in front of us. I'm gonna kick it to Ryan real quick. Can you give us a quick update on the website from that question? Yeah, thanks so much for asking. Um, Basically, we're kind of in the uh, gathering feedback stage. So a lot of the website has been built. Um, Tommy Downs and Spencer Jones have done an incredible job and it looks really good. Um, and some of the functionality is gonna be really helpful and just make things easier. Um, but we also just wanna make sure that everything's gonna run smoothly and that it goes off without a hitch. So we're just kind of gathering feedback and um, making little adjustments and we hope it's ready soon. We're really excited. Awesome. I personally, uh, we've been getting to test the, the sermon search page and it's incredible like to have that many years of sermons and the functionality of that page, you can find almost anything by keyword or scripture passage, or if you remember the title and that's going to be really helpful to us. So, um, thank you, Ryan, for your team, for all you guys, uh, for Tommy and Spencer and, the whole website team. We're really grateful. It's going to be great. Okay. I'm going to go back to the, to Joanna and Kevin, and would you guys like to pray and close us out? Yes. I think we got one last question about the balance on the mortgage, Brad. I don't know if you want to answer that real fast and then I will pray for us so that we, yeah, uh, I do. I don't remember the exact amount. I want to say it's, it's just North, just a little over 2 million. I want to say 2.13 um, I, I can look that up if, if someone needs. Okay. So if you want more details, reach out to Brad. All right. I'm going to pray so that we finish on time. Um, the Lord be with you. With you. God, we are grateful for restoration. We are grateful for the evidence and um, how you have just been present with our church for the last 10 plus years for your faithfulness. God, we're grateful for all of the updates we heard today. We pray that your hand would be upon us as we... Um, continue into the fall. We pray that you would be with David Taylor as he come and speaks to us over the fall retreat, that it would be a weekend that is fruitful for our parish, both in terms of drawing close to you and growing close to each other. We pray that you would be with us as we elect a new vestry and as we look for new members of our staff. 
you are wise, Lord Jesus, and we pray that you would bring the right people to our church to lead us. Um, we pray that you would be with us every step of the way in those processes. We're grateful for our finances and how faithful our congregation has been in this uncertain time. We're thankful to be able to ask questions like, what should we do with the gifts that God has given us? And so, Lord, um, we come to you with grateful hearts. We are grateful for all that you do in our church. We're grateful for all you do in our individual lives. We pray that your hand would be upon our church and upon our um, parishioners this day, that you would go with us as we go out. In Jesus' name, amen. 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 If you are the parent of a Apex kid, we'd love for you to click that link that's in the chat and jump right on over to the parents meeting. Thank you everybody for joining us. Look forward to seeing you soon. Bye everybody. Thanks for coming. Anybody else have another question you want to ask? I'm still here. Thanks for that, Dietrich. That was very kind of you to write that. Richard, did you want to say something? I'll unmute you. One of those buttons is going to work. I know.